Hello. So in the last uh, weeks or so I have posted some YouTube short videos about from a swim hike that I did with a guest uh, here in Eastern Finland um, guiding guiding a swim hiking trip and I want to introduce you to this concept of swim hiking. So swim hiking to me is basically normal hiking it just involves also travel on the water and depending on the route that you choose you might be able to just pack your backpack into your top into your poncho and pull it while you swim and do not take any special gear for the swim hike or as we did now in this trip uh, last week um, is that we also actually do cover quite a bit of distance in the water and uh, thus we you know use use stuff like flippers um, and and uh, like a, a thin like this is a 3-2 neoprene wetsuit um, and then also we have packed everything into these waterproof bags uh, like the backpack fits inside there and then we pull it with this um, orange line or you can also lay on top of it on, on top of the bag and there are different styles to do this um, and what is really wonderful about swim hiking is that it's really silent right you can you can cruise through the water and other animals they would not actually like it's very unsuspicious right so uh i've been swimming past two moose uh the other day and they didn't kind of notice me right it was not the place for humans to be in and and um so you're very like you know you're very low underwater uh, you let go of very little smell, right? You're almost invisible. Uh, and so that's really a nice way. And then, of course, it allows you to travel in a way that you can only do in winter, right? When the lakes are frozen, you can travel kind of like the bird flies. And with the swim hiking, you can choose routes where you, um, when you combine this amphibious land hiking and water hiking, so you have the opportunity to, to swim through lakes instead of walking around them. And you also have the possibility to go overland instead of canoeing around it if you travel on the water. Um, something to keep in mind when swim hiking is like, basically that even on very hot days here, uh, you spend time in water that is cooler than your body temperature. So be prepared um that you choose your route that you can get out if you get cold um so usually when you have like these long and thin lakes here you can choose a route where you do not have the longest swimming bits but um sometimes you might swim like for three four five kilometers uh sometimes only a couple of hundred meters and it allows you to you know sleep on some nice islands where you usually don't get to and so on um, so, by the way, another way of packing is that you have everything in your backpack ready packed waterproof and then your backpack itself would get wet but your stuff stays dry. Um, and then you just, when you come to water, you just throw the backpack in the water and you can swim. And that actually allows for much faster changes between swimming and land hiking. Um, so you just strap your flippers to the backpack, put the backpack on, get out of the water and start hiking. Uh, and then you might wear your wetsuit while you hike. Maybe you put on a rain jacket to, to stop with evaporation um, a little bit to keep warmer. Um, so I quite like this and do not mind too much to, to actually have this wetsuit on while hiking. Something about this swim hiking that even though it does have very little impact, right um you know you're not walking on the land you're not leaving uh when you're swimming you're not leaving footprints but when you get on and off out of the water onto the land or you're traveling through spots where the water is really shallow be aware the sometimes it's better even though you could get through on the land it might be better to go uh, you might sorry like even though you could get along the water might be better to get on the land if it's a very fragile, if it's shallow water and very fragile wet environment. Like wetlands is like often they're very fragile. So instead of walking in this shallow water, in this muddy water through marshes or bogs, 
might be better to get on the land and carry carry a little bit uh, the other thing is like when you get into the water or onto the land um, that is usually the place where things can happen right so i recommend uh, swimming like as long as possible when you get to the land like go on like do this dock swimming so that you feel for obstacles stones are slippery uh they can be wobbly there can be cracks between stones so and then like really get onto the land um, go on so far until you can actually stand steadily before you get up on two legs um, and the other way around you might want to go backwards into the water on all fours instead of like you know walking in and then going for a swim obviously like of course no jumping into water um, yeah then you need to have besides whatever you have packed waterproof in your backpack you will still need to have access to some things um, and ironically that might even be drinking water right sometimes the lakes are so clean that you can just drink while while swimming but usually like you want to you know if you don't know the water be really on the safe side have everything have have a water bottle hanging out of your bag uh, outside of your backpack and um, you, of course map and compass um, maybe binoculars but be aware with binoculars like even though they might be you know saying waterproof they might not be waterproof guess how I know so um, like you might have them laying on your backpack right so um, and yeah just with any kind of hiking swim hiking is also a very you know personal preference thing Right, some people might like to have everything packed waterproof in the backpack and then just have the backpack wet, or some others might like to um, have everything in one big waterproof bag. With this one big waterproof bag, when you lay on it and swim on your belly, kind of right, you get your back out of the water. Um, that's one really nice method. Uh, you have a bit higher vantage point, your head is out of the water, your shoulders out of the water, you're actually staying warmer a little bit better. And you're laying quite nice in the water. Personally, I really enjoy also swimming on my back and pulling the bag behind me. In either way, like, be aware that to have the opening of your dry bag, try to have it out of the water. Um, they are really, really well made. Um, like I'm using, uh, like this is a bag from Ortlieb. Very happy with this design. It's really big. Uh, it's not the lightest, but it's really sturdy. So sometimes when you might actually pull it a little bit, ideally you wouldn't, but it happens. So when you walk in some shallow water, it might, you know, slide over some sand or stone. So it's good to go a bit more robust here um, or just lift it out of the water and carry it. Um, and but still like these waterproof bags, when you when they when the opening, these wraps go underwater, like you will get some water inside some uh, usually so ideally have the opening even though it's rolled shut out of the water then I prefer wraps over volume right so the bag when it's full with your backpack and you roll it really really tight you have a lot of air in it right it's a big balloon uh, that's nice because it will be out of the water and not so you know you, you're not touching rocks so easily and also you're not pulling through the water so much have less resistance on lakes open waters windy days of course it might be nicer to actually um, get some air out so it's deeper in the water um, but otherwise I'm very happy with like having um, having this backpack kind of floating quite high and then really like it's it's um, have more, rather more wraps than more volume okay that was pretty much about it about swim hiking um, I recommend giving it a try it's really a wonderful way of locomotion a huge bonus besides like this kind of leave no trace um, angle is also that unlike other ways of water travel you do not need vehicles for it like canoes rafting um, with the exception of pack rafts maybe but like canoes, kayaks, all these, you always need some vehicle. Usually it means you need even two vehicles or some bicycle, something to get back to your drop off point of the car, or you need two cars, uh, or you need to go back from, from A to B. So with the swim hiking, you can use public transport, you can hitchhike, uh, you can hike obviously, um, and you're very independent of, of roads and, and vehicles. 
So um, yeah, that's a huge bonus also. So and you get into places where you just can't get to go with a canoe or you can't go while hiking. So I'm a big fan of swim hiking. Give it a try. If you have questions, uh, please reach out. If you want to go on a guided experience, even if it's just like, you know, to try it a couple of hours on the river or you want to, um, you know, have a couple of day trips, like, please reach out. Um, I'm happy to be your guide for this. Okay. Have good times and uh, take good care. Bye-bye.